Hi there, very good evening. Welcome back to the session number four, Advanced Research Methodology or Methods. And tonight, the topic is measuring variables. The last class, last Sunday night, we had a discussion on the varieties of IVs and the DV, dependent variable, independent variable. And we learned in addition to that constant variable and how to uh, study the uh, connections of that and the relationship in, in between these two types of variables and the importance of getting to know the relationship. If you know the relationship between the IV and the DV, your solution is uh, just ahead of you because adjustment of your IV can solve your DV, can solve your problem. So that is what we learned last night, uh, last Sunday night. Now, tonight, the, the, the thing is, if you want to study the relationship between these two factors, IV and the DV, we should measure it. And how to measure is the question. Now in this example, as usual, we take the same example, uh, blood sugar. And if someone is diabetic, if you want to solve it, you may have to study what are the factors influencing his blood sugar level. So example is always exercise and the food. So if you measure the exercise he does, that particular person does the exercise and the blood sugar he has in his blood, if you measure it, you can study the relationship in between. The studies would be this. If you measure the exercise of that particular patient and the blood sugar, if you measure it, you can put it in a graph like this. That is what we actually learned last night. I, we didn't discuss uh, how do we measure, but I told if you know the measurement, if you know the exercise level and the diabetes level, you can make a graph like this. Now, it may be easy for you to measure the diabetes level in your blood. If you give the blood sample to one of the labs, they'll tell you how many micrograms or milligrams of sugar per liter in your blood. They'll tell you easily. So that is measurable easily because that is some kind of numeric value. You know, you can weight the sugar. You can measure the sugar in grams or in, in milligrams or micrograms. And you can... Uh, measure the amount of sugar in a particular volume of blood. So it's easy to measure. And if you take exercise, exercise can be measured in terms of the time you spend. Maybe you spend half an hour time, half an hour of exercise or one hour of exercise or in terms of time you can measure it. Or in terms of the sweat you sweat, the liter of water you, the, the sweat you sweat, we can measure that and we can say how much exercise you have done or how many calories you, you burn due to your exercise, then we can measure that as well. There are machineries, there are, there are gadgets. If you fix it in your body, when you do your jogging or exercise, it will tell you how many calories or how much calories you have burned. So that can be measured. Exercise can be measured in, some, in terms of the calories you burn or in terms of the sweat you sweat or in terms of the time you spend on or in terms of the, uh, the distance you travel if, you, if you're if you jogging in a, in a treadmill, it will tell you the distance you have done on the treadmill, or maybe if you walk in a distance physically in a, in a ground or a jogging track, we can measure it. So it is easily measurable. So I, we didn't have any problem on that night when we were discussing this because exercise is still easily measurable. Diabetes is silly measurable because these are all kind of quantitative factors, I would say numeric factors, you can measure those in terms of numbers. The challenge is most of the times when we study problems, the, the, the numeric value or numeric problems are easier to study comparatively than the non-numeric, otherwise the qualitative problems, right? Now, an example would be if you have a problem in your relationship with your partner, it is not a problem of number, it is the problem of quality of your love you have in between how to measure the love you have over your partner and your partner has over you, it is challenging because qualitative factor. When you say your partner, I love you, darling, and she says, or he says against it, I love you too, darling. When you compare these two wordings, both of you say, I love you, and the other one says in reply, I love you too. Uh, my question is, which darlings I love you is greater than the other? Is it I love you, darling, or is it I love you too, darling? We don't know because it, it has the quality in it. We don't know the intention of that. We don't know the, 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 the mind value of it. We don't know the love value of it. You can't measure it in terms of numbers. So if you have such 
factors in your problem, it is difficult. Let me show you some examples in here. Look at this. Job satisfaction is a factor. Job satisfaction of your employees can influence the productivity of your company. Now, we believe job satisfaction, there is something called job satisfaction is existing. And if the employees are satisfied about the job they do, they would do more, they would produce more. Otherwise, uh, they would produce less comparatively. So if you want your employees to produce more, you have to increase the job satisfaction. You have to improve the job satisfaction. To do this, we have to first find out, measure, the first measure, first find out what the job satisfaction is about. We have to measure that first. And then we have to measure the productivity. Productivity can be measured easily if you produce some, some products. Maybe if you produce some phones, we can count how many phones have been made and based on the job satisfaction. So it can be measured easily because it is numeric value. But my question is how to measure this job satisfaction here? We all believe motivation is another factor. We believe it is existing, leadership existing, culture existing. Culture has a connection to the productivity. Okay, uh, if you have a productive culture, if you have some healthy culture, your productivity of your employees would be high. And if you have a bad culture, corruptive culture or lazy culture, then your productivity may be, may be less. Now, if you want to study, if there's a connection between the culture in your organization and the productivity of your organization, you should measure, measure both. You can measure the productivity maybe because it's a numeric value, but the culture, how are you going to measure it? So that is what I meant, customer satisfaction, customer satisfaction, uh, 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 employee stress, purchasing power, these kind of things. It is challenging to measure, but we believe there are something like this. There is something like this and it is existing. So how to measure? If you want to find out the relationship, you have to measure this. And if you measure this only, you can draw a graph like that, and then you can find out the relationship, then you can find a solution. So tonight, that is what the, the basic idea is. Let me move on. Now look at this. Let me take an example, a very basic example. If you want to measure some temperature, uh, you can't measure the temperature using uh, your senses because you may say that if you touch the water, if the water is hot, I can say it is hot. And if you touch the water after a certain time of heating, if you, if, it, if you can feel more temperature, then you can say it is even hotter. That's fine, absolutely. But after you touch some hot water using your fingers, if you touch some other different hot water, you won't be able to find out the temperature of the second water you touched because the sensors will lose the sensitivity there. If you touch two different waters, and if you touch the third water, the temperature will be in a messy reading because you won't be able to measure it. So touching is not the way to measure the temperature. So that we have to have some different measurement. That is why the scientific researchers have identified some way which is this. When the temperature goes up of some matter, the matter expands. Using this concept, Using this concept, this thermometer is made, right? The idea is exp expansion of mercury in a glass tube. If you, that is the indicator that indicates whether the temperature is going down or coming, going up or coming down. The temperature goes up, the, the mercury line will go up because the indicator is this expansion of mercury is due to the temperature increase or increment. So we can measure the temperature using the expansion of mercury. So my point is you never measure the temperature directly. You measure the expansion of mercury and you find out the temperature of some other property you have or some other matter you have. So the temperature is the factor. You can't measure straight away directly. The expansion of the mercury is the indicator, indicator, that's the key word, indicator that indicates the temperature. So indicator is the tool, is the measuring tape that measures the factor. In this case, 
expansion of mercury is the indicator that measures the temperature, which is the factor. So the same thing applies if you want to measure something. If you can't see those, you can find something you can see that can measure it, that can measure it. And it is what we call indicators. Let me take an example here. Look at this problem. In my organization, I have sales problem. Sales is dropping, sales is declining. That's the problem. So sales is declining, that's the problem. So I found out this is due to the sales satisfaction, or sorry, customer satisfaction. I found out this may be due to the customer satisfaction. If the customers are satisfied, they would do repurchasing. They would do recommendations, word of mouth. They would come back to me again. They would purchase more and so on. So now when the sales is dropping, I can guess customer satisfaction is going down. Now, I want to study whether this is correct. Is it due to the customer satisfaction, the sales is declining or something else? Because the sales can decline for many reasons. Number one, one of them or another one would be the product defects. Your product is not uh, perfect. It has the manufacturer defect. Due to that, the sales may decline. Your supply chain, you don't deliver things online. Because of that, your sales may decline. Your customer services are not up to the standard. Due to that, the sales may decline. Your competition has done something better than you do, or some other new companies entered into the market and they're delivering something new so that your sales may decline. So we don't know whether is it due to the customer satisfaction. And if you doubt it should be due to customer satisfaction, you have to measure it. You have to measure customer satisfaction, that is what the IV, and you have to measure sales here, that is what the D. So customer satisfaction is the factor we're going to study if there is any relationship between that and the sales. So now measuring customer satisfaction straight away is impossible at all because it is a factor you can't see. It's like temperature. Now we need a thermometer here where there are some indicators. That is why I brought in something, the refund you make. Customers are not satisfied about your product. They may recall the money. They may want to return the goods or services and they want to recall the money. That is what we call refund. Refund can be measured. Refund can be measured, okay? So if you can measure refund, how many money or how much money or how many refunds, number of refunds or amount of refund you do can measure the customer satisfaction. And the repurchasing, how many customers are purchasing again? That can measure, it is yes, repurchasing, number of repurchases or number of amount of repurchase, number of repurchase or amount of repurchase, we can use that to measure customer satisfaction. And the next uh, uh, opportunity would be customer complaints. How many complaints about the product defect, about the customer services, about the whatever, if you can measure that number of them, we can measure customer satisfaction. So this is what I'm calling the thermometer here. This will indicate these indicators, thermometer, we use only one indicator there, uh, the, the moving mercury line in a tube. That is what we use. One is enough to measure. Here, customer satisfaction, you may measure it in terms of many things. And I just suggested three, there may be many. So we need to find out these kind of numeric things. So it is easy, refund in terms of money, number of refund, amount of refund, it is money, number, uh, quantity, repurchasing amount, number of repurchasing quantity. Customer complaints may be measured in quantity as well. And there may be an argument or a debate how to measure complaint uh, in numbers. Uh, we'll debate that after the class. So this is what the message. Now, if you want to measure two things, if you want to study a problem, you always have a problem. That is what we call always DV, dependent variable. And on the other side, whatever the factor that influence that is what we call independent variable. Both of these should be measured. 
And in most of the cases, it, it may be impossible to measure uh, those because, because uh, uh, because it, it may be qualitative in nature and you can't see those. There are questions uh, uh, on the chat box. Let me answer that at the end of the session, please. So it may be difficult for us to measure because you can't see. So that we have to find out something we can see, then we can measure it. That is what we call indicators, right? So factors are measured by indicators. Factors are measured by indicators. And this is what the key message in this. Let me take one more example, or a few examples, how to do it. And look at this. I was only showing the, the uh, IV, customer satisfaction, and the indicators for that is uh, that those are here, customer complaints, repurchasing, and refund. You can take those into numeric value, as I said. For customer satisfaction, customer satisfaction is a qualitative factor, qualitative uh, uh, factor that influences sales. You can't measure that. So that we use some indicators to interpret that in terms of number. That is what the numeric value is about. And again, sales, when we talk about sales, sales is uh, straight away a uh, quantitative factor a numeric factor, it is based on uh, this. Revenue may be an indicator of sales. Uh, the inventory you have, how much stock you have is an indicator of sales. And the number of units you sell, it may be an indicator of sales. And number of units you order, the, the purchasing to sell, the, the suppliers, whatever they supply, that may also indicate the sales. So. We can find those in terms of number. Put those two numbers in num numeric value and put them in a graph this way or that way or some other way. And we can find out the relationship. Let me take a few more examples. Here, look at this. I want to study something. This is a good example to understand this even further. Now I want to study. There are 15 students in the class right now. And I want to study. Uh, all of you are having certain amount of knowledge in certain things or whatever the things you are working in. You may be doing your own business or you may be uh, working for some organization based on the knowledge you have. You know, if I'm working for an organization as a lecturer, I have certain knowledge to teach so that I get paid. And you work for an organization as a manager, you have certain knowledge so that you, you do, you, you give that knowledge, you use that knowledge to produce something for that organization and you get paid. My research problem is whether, there is a connection between the knowledge you have and the earnings, okay? Because we, we understand sometimes well-educated people, they are all overworked and underpaid. And there are some under-educated people, they work less and they get paid as well. We see that, this, this uh, earning imbalance, you see. It. So I want to study whether there's a connection between these two factors, knowledge and earnings. Now, if I want to do this, if I want to make a graph like this, or like this or, or other way around or whatever the, the graph, I want to measure both. I want to measure how much a person earns and how much knowledge he has. Now the earnings can be measured using this kind of indicators, how much salary he gets at the end of his tenor, at the end of his uh, month and how much bonus he gets, allowances and the rest of the rewards he gets, we can measure them in terms of this in numbers easily because earnings coming in money so we can easily measure that and earning may be qualitative as well you know uh, sometimes they provide a certain qualitative benefits as well non-financial benefits also so that can also be measured or that should also be measured so these are the indicators that can earn that can measure the earning and on the other side knowledge how can i how can i measure the knowledge of a person there are 15 students in the class and if I, if I study here, who is more knowledgeable? Who has the greater knowledge than the other? How can I measure it? Knowledge is a qualitative factor. How to measure? All right. This is, this is the idea. What I do, based on the knowledge you have. Now, let's say if I want to measure the research methodology knowledge all of you have, uh, what I do, I make two questions. I make two questions. And these questions are qualitative questions maybe or quantitative questions whatever it is 
And each question carries 50 marks each, 50 marks each. And I give the marks for this question. I give you the question and you answer the question, I give the marks. And then uh, one of you score 35 for the first question. And second one, you, you measure 36. So altogether 71 marks. And I have measured your, your knowledge, right? And the same thing applies. If you want to measure job satisfaction, if you want to measure motivation, if you want to measure anything, you can make those into these kind of questions. And for the answer, we give numbers. That is what these exams do. Your A-level exam, how much knowledge you have in your biology, botany, chemistry, uh, and the physics. The and knowledgeable people to put them in the medical faculty. They want to measure how much knowledge you have. And the indicators are the exam marks. So they give you some biology questions. And you write two, three, four, five paragraphs per question for those qualitative answers. They ask about to explain a human self. And you explain that. I explain, you explain. Every single student explain. Based on the explanation, we give different marks. And those explanation of qualitative answer is translated into numbers. And you put the number and you do the analysis. So this is how this indicator works. Any qualitative factor you have, it can be measured in terms of numbers. Okay. So if you have any problem like that, there's a possibility to measure it in terms of number. If you measure it in terms of number, it may be easy for you to understand the relationship than it is as it is called. So well, let's see further. So this is the, this is the, the basic idea now, the, the concept I've been discussing. If you have a factor here, if the factor is invisible, if the factor is uh, a qualitative factor, you can't see it or otherwise you can't measure it, you can't touch it, there is no way to measure it. What you do, you develop some indicators, right? Indicator one two, three, how many ever you want, you use it, it's up to you. One indicator may measure, 55 indicator even can measure it. So you measure those and you translate them into a numeric value. And after that, you do your analysis, it is easy. After you translate that into a numeric value, you don't have any other work to do because there are softwares, SPSS, Minitab, this can do easy work for you. They'll give you the graph automatically within a couple of clicks. So, yeah, now the next message on this. So I, I think, I hope that you've got the message. If you want to study a relationship between uh, two factors, measuring indicators, you may not be able to measure uh, those problems directly. In sometimes even it is a quantitative factor. In, in sales, sales is a quantitative factor, but you measure that using different numeric values, numeric uh, indicators. So you won't be able to measure the factor straight away. You have to find out some indicators. Now the challenge is the designing or identification of the indicator it should be the key. It is the key. If you find the wrong measurement, if you find the wrong indicator to measure it, you're going to end up with the wrong conclusion, wrong solution, and you're not going to solve your problem. So the, the next challenge on the way, we, we started the session uh, on the very first class we always see the symptoms. From the symptoms, you have to find out the problem. From the problem, you have to find out the factors. From the factors, you have to find out some indicators that measures the factors exactly. If you make any mistake in measuring the indicators, then you're going to mess it up again because you're not going to measure it exactly. So you're not going to find out the real relationship in between these two IVs and the DV. So the challenge. Now, when you're measuring it, you may make mistake finding the right measurement, a right indicator. That is one issue. The next issue is you may not be able to get exactly what you want from the respondents. For example, if you want to study uh, uh, the percentage of COVID infection in your city, you have to speak to people uh, that uh, do you have uh, the, the symptoms. I, I see people when some antigen test is going on in one junction 
if the people get to know that the, the junction is uh, with police and the relevant offices to do this antigen test, people, they just uh, walk away from that junction and they find a different route to escape from it. It's happening. I learned. So because uh, they don't want to, 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 to take the risk, I think. I don't know the reason, but you know, I don't go out anyway, but whoever they go out, they say it. So the reason is that they don't want to give the sample of them. They don't want to give a sample of them. That, that may be the reason. Otherwise, they might think some of the different risks. Now, like this, if you ask some question to someone, if you ask some question to someone, they don't want to answer it because it, there may be some social uh, undesirability. They purposely hide things. Uh, if you want to study, how many times uh, did you speak to your illicit affair personnel? Nobody want to answer this. They would say, I never, but they are speaking. They just spoke to them just before the question was asked as well, right? These kind of sensitive questions, they never, they never answer. So based on the wrong answers, based on the biased answers they give you, if you study the case, you would not get the right relationship. So that when you want to measure things, you have to measure it using different measurements that they don't react to it. An example, you never measure the person's antigen test straight away because they're not going to, they're going to be reactive to that. They're going to escape from it. They want to find out some escape route to escape from it. Rather, you may do something else instead that they may feel that you are measuring the, 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 the COVID infection. You can do it. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know how to but you can find out something. Let's say instead of taking this stick to put into the nose to get some plan to test the antigen, whatever the test, you can ask him how many times did you cough last night? You can ask him what was the temperature of your body last night? He doesn't know why you're asking the temperature for, but if you straight away ask him the antigen test, he knows why you are doing it, what you're doing. So he would be reactive to that. He would try to, to uh, hide it because when you go to a building these days if they are taking antigen tests and letting you inside nobody's going to go to the building but you go to the building if they only take the temperature what you do you check the temperature to find out if there's an infection but they don't feel that but if you do the antigen test and let them in you never get customers to your building so when you want to measure it the first thing you do is you got to find out the right right indicator number one, and that right indicator should be something non-reactive. Your, your respondents shouldn't understand what you are doing, but there is an ethical issue involved in, when you want to do these kind of things, you should be so ethical because the, the data you collect from these people to study, the indicators you use to measure something from these people, there are vulnerable people, elderly people, kids and, and uh, uh, unhealthy people, medically ill people, you know, there are so many other vulnerable crowd, you should not do certain things. So you should define your own ethical limits and you got to design your thing. So let me come back again. If you want to measure something, you should definitely have your indicators. You should develop the right indicator, right measurement. You can't measure the height of someone using liters. You have to have the meters. So you have to have the right indicator, number one. Number two, if you, when you want to develop this, if you feel that the respondents may be reactive to this, you should find out some indicator that measures it without making any sensitive reactions from them, number two. Number three, when you want to do these things, you got to be ethical. Research ethics, it is very important. So that is what about. Now, let me come to this uh, final area here. This is an example. Now, your problem may be, may be uh, productivity and that productivity factors or the, uh, the, the influential factors or the IVs may be work environment, leadership and the rewards. Now, if you want to measure the work environment, you can't measure the work environment straight away. You should definitely have indicators. So it may be something physical, how many air conditioning you have, what is the ventilation you have in your building and what is the temperature of your work environment a day, a daily. Those kind of things can be the indicators to measure. The culture of your work environment can be measured. Leadership can be measured in many terms. Rewards can be measured in many terms. So 
we should exactly develop these IVs, uh, the, the indicators to these IVs and to the DV as well. That is what I showed earlier. You should measure both. And let me tell you this. Uh, now, right, so I, I, have, I have told you about these IVs, DVs, indicators, and non-reactive indicators and so on. Now I want to tell you, you might have a challenge here. How to write my literature review for my research? I'm doing my PhD, I'm doing my master's or bachelor's, and I want to build my literature review. In your literature review, let me let me have an autopsy or an operation in here. The problem is sales. The factor is customer satisfaction. DV is the sales, IV is the customer satisfaction. And the IV is measured by these three indicators, which I have given in a box. Customer satisf customer complaint, purchasing, repurchasing, refund. These are the indicators. And the sales here is measured by revenue, inventory, sales of unit. These are the indicators that measures the sales. Now your literature is nothing but your problem. You write about your problem and you write about the indicators. You're going to measure the problem. Your literature is about your problem your problem, your indicators that measures the problem. And your literature is about your factors, IVs, and the indicators that measures the IVs, and that is it. So your literature is about writing sales and the indicators of sales, revenue, inventory, sales of units. This is what the literature part of it. And the next is about your IVs, the customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction is the IV and the indicators are customer complaint, repurchasing, refund. If you write this, you would cover 1,500 words. And if you have three more IVs, you would cover another 1,500 into three and your literature is almost about 9,000 easily done. This is what your literature is about. You write nothing on this. You only write about the problem, the measurement of how you're going to measure it. And you write about the indicators and you write about the uh, factors of that indicators. Otherwise factors and the indicators of it, that is it. Th that is the content of it. You don't write anything more than that. If you write this, you would get people cover easily nine, 10,000 words. So for a master's level, it is easy, it is enough. And when you write it, you should have some engagement, you should cite it, you should refer it, and you should bring your arguments, you should bring your evaluation. All these things are there. You should write that in a, in a proper professional way. That is yes. And the content is obviously this, the dependent variable, the measurement or the indicators of that, the independent variables and the indicators of that. That is it. That is what the literature review is about. And the next thing is uh, about your questionnaire. How to build your questionnaire? Now, questionnaire is a simple logic in here. You want to measure. You want to measure your factors, your IVs and the DV. And if you want to measure those, you're going to use indicators. And indicators are the measuring tape. And you have to have a question for each indicator. That is it. Now, in my case, customer complaint is measuring. Customer complaint is measuring customer satisfaction. So I'm having a question here. How often? How often? How often you may complain? That's the question. And the second indicator to measure customer satisfaction is repurchasing. How often do you repurchase? Next question. So simple logic, your questionnaire to measure, your questionnaire to measure your IVs and the DV is going to be the question of your indicators. Each indicator you have is a question. In each indicator, you may ask more than one question if you want, that is yes. However, at least one question. If you have an indicator that should be measured using it. So you're going to have question for each indicator. 
And this is the question you're going to ask from the respondents. If, you, if it is about customer satisfaction, you're going to ask your customer how often you make complaints. Because complaints are the measuring tape of customer satisfaction. How often do you repurchase? How much refunds do you have claimed or did you, did you claim with the last six months or last one year? Those kind of questions. So you can measure how satisfied they are. And you can put them in a numeric value and we can do the analysis. So I think that is it from me tonight. Uh, so let me go for a quick recap. If you want to study a problem, you always have a DV or the problem and you always have IVs. And both of these should be measured in terms of some indicators because you can't measure those directly. So that we have to find out some indicators uh, to interpret that in terms of numeric values. And all your literature is based on all the IVs and the DVs and the indicators of each. And your research questionnaire contains question for each indicator of each IVs or IV and the DV. And that is what you're going to give to your respondents to collect your data. And when you collect it, you analyze it and you find out the relationship easily. If you know the relationship, your problem is sorted. You make a recommendation to do some adjustment on the IV so that the DV would come to the level the level you want. That is it. So I hope we have uh, I have done something useful to you tonight. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a great evening. Be safe. I see you next Sunday.